Hello and welcome back to Space Engine Days. In today's video, we're once again looking at another design that uses wheels on their side. But this time it's much bigger, much heavier, and even more stable than the one I showcased last time. This is the HSDC Dune Conqueror, which is this lovely thing over here. So this is a large, small block grid that features a tiny interior for you to get inside of. We've got a lot of cargo containers for you to store a few bits and bobs and even transport it from one place to another. We have a little bit of defense in the form of a custom turret on top, and we do have one hell of a lot of scripts, including a very fancy one that projects a 3D image. Pressing F10 and finding the Dune Conqueror in the spawn menu. There it is. This thing is not 56,627 small blocks, but it does use the Sparks of the Future, Heavy Industry, Warfare 2, Wasteland, and Decorative Block Number 2 DLC packs. We've got a little bit of information about it on the Steam Workshop page, where it clearly states the buttons and what not to do. And down here, we've got a little bit of information to make sure it stays stable when going at high speeds. So giving this thing a thumbs up and then copying it to clipboard, we'll come around to here. This thing is only 1,366 blocks with a PCU limit of 7,772. We'll get rid of that. We can now move around to the very front. We'll have a quick look around the outside, a quick look at the interior, and then we'll test it out, go at some high speeds, and see how this vehicle can handle this wheel setup. So my character can now bugger off just a little bit. And this is what we get at the very front. So front and center, what we can see is a bunch of window blocks to appear inside at our cockpit. We can also see a rotating image, which is our 3D integrity script, as well as a bunch of artificial horizons and some other useful stuff that we'll see when we're on the inside. Dropping down just a little bit, we've got a button that's going to open up a ramp and open up a doorway on the inside. This is our way of getting in and out, and it is a nice setup. You don't have to move whatsoever, you just get onto the ramp, press the button, and you'll lift yourself up into the ship without moving. Anyway, we see some spotlights to light up the darkness, and a couple of atmospheric thrusters help move this thing around. And right below it, we can see how our wheels have all been set up. Just moving around onto the side, we've got some nice use of our neon tubes. And over onto this side, we've got two large atmospheric thrusters to help on our left and right. Onto this section, we've got two batteries to help power this thing. We can see a hydrogen engine for some additional power. Then we've got a slanted solar panel. This solar panel can be lifted up with this small button right below it. This is going to reveal to us our car containers, some easy access to load stuff up and to take stuff out, as well as a parachute just in case you get into an emergency while flying off a cliff. Pulling away from that and moving around towards the back here, even more atmospheric thrusters, some more large atmospheric thrusters to push us around moving forwards, and some great use of our neon tubes adding to the brake lights. Behind here, we do have a couple more wheels to act as a bump guard, just in case you do reverse into something, and a few more small atmospheric thrusters to help push us forwards. A connector to dock this thing up. Then moving all the way up and above, we see some fantastic use of our beam blocks just going along with our cargo containers. Then over onto this section, this is our custom turret. We've got ourselves a camera in the middle and two auto cannons to blast our enemies with. But to continue to look up, there's our hinges for our solar panels. Then towards the front there, there's an oxygen tank, an antenna, an ore detector. So we can use this as a mobile base if we wanted to. And then towards the front there, there's our windows to peer inside. Dropping down and coming underneath it, this section right here next to our hinge is our ramp to get up and inside. We see how our abstract thrusters have been set up, as well as some more great use of our beam blocks. There's an O2H2 generator, another connector, and then towards the back there, there's what I think is a battery, and there is our rear bump guards, just in case we need it. And there we go, that's a very brief look around the outside of the HSDC Dune Conqueror, and it looks great with how it's been set up. We've got everything we need to survive in survival mode, and a nice sort of cargo space, so we can use this to do transport missions, or even just to move a few bits and bobs from one place to another. But now what I can do is just grab hold of my character, we can come around to the front button, and we won't do that just yet, we'll come around to the side button, and press that. There we go, that will lift up both solar panels on both sides, and reveal to us our cargo containers. Once again, we can now press that, lower them down, then come around to the front. So pressing that button, that's going to deploy our ramp all the way down and then open up the door. I can now hop up onto here, press this button down, and now we're going to be raised all the way up, and we're on the inside. I can now walk across, the door will close behind me, and this is what we get. Just looking around the room, we've got some seats on these side for a couple passages to come with you. There's our LCDs at the front for our 3D display. There's a sound button, a few interior lights, 
and behind us is one hell of a lot of scribs. So if we start off right in the dead center, this is going to be a button for our lights. There we go. Got an air vent right there. We've got a cargo access in case we need it. We then got a script to control the lights. We've got auto LCD screens. Onto this one is our 3D projection. And then there's our easy automation script. Over onto this side, we've got a custom weapon controller where we can take over our gun on top. There's a control button, which is going to this. And now we can just start shooting our auto cannons. There we go. Hopping out of this on the, onto the opposite side, we should have another one. There it is. And we can see that we're not currently set up for anything. So if you did want to add on another custom turret, you could link it to this one. Anyway, turning around and coming into the seat. First person view, this is what we get. We've got one hell of a lot of information all the way around us, including a radar. Looking up and into the middle, this is our fantastic 3D integrity script. Well, I'm actually surprised this is even possible. There we go, it's just going to spin all the way around. We won't get our wheels. That is the main body of the vehicle. Just looking down and around. There we go. Then just bring up the HUD. These are the only controls we get. So number one and number two is going to be for our braking and of course to slow this vehicle down. We'll touch on that a bit later. Number three is going to be for our forward facing thrusters to put us into a cruise. Number four is for our gyroscopes if we want to have exact control over this or make it a bit more stable when running this thing around. Number five is for our emergency parachutes. And then the last button is our engine to turn it on and off, which is how we're going to turn this vehicle on. On to tab number two, we then got some controls for our batteries, our hydrogen engines, our antenna, our ore detector, we then got our hinges for our solar panels to lift them up and put them down. And then number nine is for the doorway of how we got into this with our ramp and our secondary door. But coming back over to tab number one in first person view, we were to press number three, we've got a nice heads up display on that LCD screen telling us if they're active or not. And then there is our gyro override. And just to demonstrate that, if I was to turn my mouse all the way around, that's what we get. Then pressing number four, we become a lot more rigid, but we still have a tiny bit of control. Turning that off, we can now see our number one, number two has reset to zero percent. Then moving forwards, we can press number one to turn that all the way up. We don't want to go above 25 percent, but that's how we're going to slow ourselves down. And there we go. So it does take a bit of time to come to a stop. So do plan ahead if you are charging along towards your base. But switching that all the way down, we now go for a proper ride. And this is what we get. And this is what I love about this wheel setup. It's so silky smooth and it really shouldn't work, but it does. This is it in first person view. We're going at our maximum speed of 100 meters per second. We can spin this all the way around. Thanks to our weight, we're not going to flip up like the tiny vehicles I showcased. And here we go across the grass. Now spin this all the way around like so. And there we go. It's just a bloody fantastic design. And I can't wait to see people use a large block rover, make it even bigger, because I'm sure that'll be even better. Yes, this is what we get. We can just spin this all the way around. We've got no issues whatsoever until, of course, we run into a rock. So to end this video, what I'm going to do is try and find a nice rough patch of ground, and we'll go and ride it across that, which I think is in this direction. So we're going to go and narrowly avoid that tree. And just looking around, I do absolutely love this wheel setup. It's so odd to look at, especially when they're starting to spin like that, how they're spinning slowly. Yes, here we go. There's some rough terrain ahead of us. And we'll see what it does. So hiding the HUD, we can see the ground now starting to pop in. That looks like a great place to go up. I'm expecting it just to go clang at the front. There we go. It is just sort of gliding across and that is a small little chasm there. Let's just go and angle that. There we go, using the gyroscopes. Hopefully I can get this to land. We are sort of flying a little bit, which I'm pretty sure happened last time. But hopefully I can land this successfully and it won't just explode. There we go, there's a little bounce. And there we go. That was a successful landing and was 100% what I was expecting to happen with a much more heavier version of this type of vehicle. But anyway, that is pretty much it, like I said, for this vehicle. There'll be a link to it in the description below if you do wish to download and play around for yourself. Highly recommend you do, because it's a bloody fantastic setup, and I can't wait to see people get even bigger and even heavier. So there'll be a link to it in the description below if you do wish to download and play around for yourself. Highly recommend you do, and I'll be back with another video some point soon. Bye bye.